Hello there. My name is Salim Javed and I'm an assistant professor at the Faculty of Mass Communication and Media Technology at SGT University. We are running a series called Understanding Cinema where we are understanding every decade separately. Like suppose if you have been following the series, you must be knowing that when we started the series, how the cinema started in India, by 1930s we were talking about uh, very so, so many social issues. By the time we got independence, then we were talking about nation building. By 60s we were talking about romanticism. By 70s there was an angry young man. And if you remember last time when we met, we talked about uh, how n the cinema of 1980s is called the low point of Hindi cinema or the worst period of Hindi cinema or the era of uh, strange paradox, uh, you know, a uh, period of stagnation and instability. Now there we also talked about a lot of interesting films and how uh, television was gripping the entire nation, was offering wonderful programs and in this lecture we will be talking about liberalization, how liberalization changed the nature of filmmaking in India, what it brought to the basket, what it, it offered as a form, what it offered as a system and how things started changing. Now people only talk about liberalization but actually there were three things, liberalization, uh, then you have globalization and privatization, the, they were called the LPG policy, economic policy. Now understand that why there was a need of something like this. But before we start understanding liberalization, let me just sum up uh, the, let me bring some of the reasons because of which liberalization came into being. I said about 1980s that it was the low point and things like that and it, very different kind of cinema was made like uh, if you if if i read out the names films like lootma takkar nishan chunauti dard vardat you know sajan ki saheli hatkadi bezuban now what happened because of these films that families they stopped going to cinema halls now what happens when families stop going to cinema halls you have a clear cut decline in the revenue. Now imagine that these are the cinema halls of, uh, of uh, late 1980s and early 90s where the seating capacity was 500 to 1000. Now imagine a cinema hall which has got 500 seats or 1000 seats. Now families are not going to cinema hall and you have to fill minimum seats to run a show. You do not have audience. So the repercussion of this was that it, it, it is basically a circular argument that because there was bad cinema, that's why people were not coming. So because people were not coming, that's why producers were making a very different kind of cinema. Not only this was the reason, there was other very specific reason in this era. I'm talking about late 1980s and early uh, uh, 1990s. VCR was one of the reasons which actually hold people back at home. They were for the first time free to see, uh, they were like free to uh, hire a VHS and put it on VCR and see a film of their choice. At the same time, television was offering wonderful content. I mean, television was almost going in its golden age. And then uh, as early as 1991-92, uh, the entry of cable network also changed the equation. There was one more factor which was high entertainment X. Now on the one hand quality cinema was not produced. On the other hand you have people not coming to cinema hall. Third you are getting good content at television. You have VCR where you can see things uh, you know as per your choice. And so, so you can understand that it's a perfect recipe for disaster. Now, why government have uh, it, it? It had to take measures of uh, you know liberalizing its economy. Everything was going perfectly. Now, uh, when you have control. Uh, so what kind of a control you have? Import control. You have foreign exchange control and. But as late as uh, 2001, there was no industry status also. Now, in some books, you will find that it was year 19, 
1998 when industry status was granted but rbi uh, take out its notification in year 2001 so now what happens when you have control over import you know you do not have access uh, to the state of art equipment now you have been using equipments what you have been using since independence onwards now by the time uh, if you have been uh, following cinema then you understand 80s was an era where a lot of technology there was a lot of technological changes going on there were a lot of experiments were going on there were uh, wonderful cinema being created around the world and we were still stick, sticking to the same age old technology we were not allowed or rather it was very difficult to import equipments which were like new which could you, you know give a different uh, uh, style different presentation to the visuals so import controls were you know uh, they were like uh, under some specific agency then foreign ex- foreign exchange control you know it you know what happens you know sometimes we think when we understand cinema we think that something is not related to cinema or something is not important to us a war has broke out somewhere in some part of the world and we are not affected by it trust me it never happens they we are living in a glo- global village where if something goes wrong at one end of the globe you know the the waves of repercussions reach to us also now this foreign exchange control uh, you know resulted in limited access to foreign locations now you would say uh, uh, sleep so what is the need of uh, shooting in foreign location now please understand this uh, this is a very uh, age old argument that whether uh, cinema needs to value the talent more or the beauty more uh this has been a, a point of uh, uh, long discussions at night but i i tell you it's a combination of both if your content is good and you present it beautifully it works magically so uh, shooting at the right place is also very important uh, as it is as it is as important shooting with the right talent now the third point which is like as important and this gives birth to lot of problems in cinema that it was not recognized as industry till late 1990s now what happens when an industry you know we say film industry uh, which is a, a very old uh, uh, phrase but uh, the 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 status of industry came Uh, towards the end of the last century and as i said in 2001 uh, only now when you do not have industry st- status understand the economic uh, economics of it when you do not have the industry status what happens to make films you need money from mo- from where that money will come you will go to private lenders now i i give you a very uh, a uh, interesting example suppose if there is a producer who takes uh, uh, a loan of 2 crore rupees now he says that uh, uh, t- uh, around uh, uh, 22 20 uh, 20 to 25% will be charged now i am going to take a loan of 2 crore and i am paying almost 25% charge on that when i give someone loan i will deduce i will deduct that 25% in advance and will give you the remaining amount stating that you have received 2 rupees 2 crore from me this was the state this is how films were being made so technically everything was dependent on the performance of one film so if one film fail, fails maybe the lifelong saving of the producer or maybe all the borrowings go they they dive deep so it, you must have heard that his uh, his or her film flopped and he or she was bankrupt it was because of this reason that the industry because there was no industry status so there was no bank available to loan you so it was only after 2001 that uh, banks you know they were ready to give loans to film producers though there is some technical issue even today also but at least there was a system in place when we talk about industry status now understand that th- this is what we have just talked about that there was some import control there was some foreign exchange control and there was no industry status now 
if you see it from the beginning of independence india adopted the path of mixed economy to address its two problem one was poverty and other was economic backwardness now there are a lot of arguments that mixed economy was not good for india uh, why did we opt for it and things like that but given the situation the way we started you know we were left with no resources no 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 functional body uh, this approach was right at that point of time but it it started failing by the time we reached 1990s and why it failed specifically at at 1990s i'll i'll give you some reasons for that now now what happens that uh, indian economy faced a major economic crisis in early 1991 Indian economy witnessed a gap between public revenue and expenditure continuously for a number of years it caused internal imbalance in fiscal and external imbalance in payment situation this situation was accentuated by the gulf crisis in late 1990s now understand this you must be under, you must be wondering that how come today i am talking so much about economics and things like that but to understand 1990s because this is a shift you know if you really have to put a clear cut demarcation you know you can take cinema before 1990s and you can take cinema uh, you, you know from 1990 onwards because if you put two films together like you you put one film from 60s you put one film from 70s then one from 80s and one from 90s you know these are four different entities all together and we are making the cinema the way we are making it today it is because of 1990s now there was so much change going on in 1990s that it becomes very diff- that, that it becomes very important to understand how holistically we were changing so uh, as far as economical front is concerned we were facing a major crisis the reason was gulf war as i said in the beginning that you know at if something happens at one part of the world the, the, you know the ripples of consequences come back to us also now what we have to do with the gulf war it is it is happening somewhere in middle east it has nothing to do with us but it ha- you know the, it affected us so much now the internal imbalance in fiscal and external imbalance in payment you know situation caused the decl- you know it 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 caused the decline of credit rating of in india internationally destroying its capacity to bear internal and external shocks and the inflationary pressure was around the corner now imagine something that that the 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 reserve which is available for a country is drying up you know inflation is going up old system of economy is not working then what do we need to do now the only way out at that point of time was make our policies liberal that's why it's called liberalization now what does liberalization means you know you know so as i said that it left government with no option but to resort to economic reform reform measures like liberalization privatization and globalization which is called lpg model of economic reform in india now uh, i will not dive deep into very economic formation of it uh, because then it will be uh, what was uh, how much we were expend uh, the, what was the expenditure how much we borrowed how much we kept in stock uh, what was the running amount that, that we had so i am not getting into that uh, right now the important thing is that we were drawing up government made an arrangement because of which privatization started because of which there were some liberal policies you know when we say liberal policies it means there was some uh, license raj was going on so because there was some license raj was going on so because of that we have this liberalization thing happening you know uh, it is a way to make things easy it's it's a way to make business easy and obviously globalization you know we were becoming a global village so globalization has to be there so it is not only about liberalization it's about liberalization it's about privatization it's about globalization now how these things you know brought 
a change as far as media is concerned. Now, I have been talking about films, but this particular you know, incident which is liberalization and Indian filmmaking or liberalization or, or media in India, you know, till 1990s we had only Doordarshan. Okay, and we were watching. Doordarshan was offering some of the best programs. You know, it was going in its golden age. Now, for the first time, Gulf War was shown live to people. Pe people were seeing foreign content. They were seeing international programs because of the cable TV. Now, imagine that you have never seen a war. You are seeing that wall live. You are actually, you, you know, making your audience literate that this is also an area which can be seen. So, the, 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 the visual geography of the audience was increasing. They were exposed to foreign content also. Now, they, were dem they, they started demanding more for it. Now, this is how when uh, like uh, this... Uh, uh, Star TV started, then CNN showed the uh, live footage and then people started w demanding more. You know, this the Indian media scenario completely changed in 1991 with the arrival of international television. Hong Kong based Star TV, uh, subsidiary of News, News Corporation and CNN started broadcasting directly into India using the uh, Asiatic One satellite. Now, we were only exposed to one sort of a programming. Now, suddenly there is a floodgate open for, you know, for as many varieties as you and I can imagine. Where would you go? Obviously, you would, uh, that's a human nature, we would opt for more. And this is what we did. And I, I still remember that when... Uh, we were fiddling with antenna uh, uh, which was attached to television we we again started fiddling to tune two different channels which were we were somehow tuning and i remember seeing i dream of genie uh, i mean in my at at my place there was i i was never exposed to any english program before that my first english program was i dream of genie and it was a, a completely new world for me because I, I i never saw something like that where there is a pilot there is a genie and they are doing magic and there were wonderful uh, uh, in, incidents happening and it was not me alone millions of people like me were there those wh whose eyes were wide open so, understand when we are talking about liberalization, we are not just talking only about one aspect of media, which is cinema. We are talking it in terms of uh, private news channels also. We are talking in terms of uh, uh, printing newspaper also. We are talking in terms of the way advertisement change itself. We are talking in terms of... Uh, of, of creative business per se, we are talking about media as a whole. Now, this government's new open sky policies allowed the media audience to have access not only to several Hindi and regional language channels, but also to foreign entertainment programs, including latest Hollywood film. Now, this from this point, we will connect to cinema. Now, when you talk about different mediums, yes, everything is there. But when people started directly seeing Hollywood releases, you know, they started demanding, they started, you know, demanding quality. Now, suppose if, if I'm showing like the films that if you remember that I, I, I talked about in the beginning, like Sindoor, Majal, Jaan Hateli Pe, Mulzim, Kasam, Zalzala, uh, Fars Ki Jang. And on the other hand, you are seeing Godfather. What you would you ask for? What you would you ask for? Obviously, you will ask for quality. And whosoever gives you quality, you will go with him or her. That is what ex exactly started happening in early 90s. We were exposed to a you know, plethora of options. We chose the best and we demanded our people to give us the best. And this is how the new world of privatization 
globalization, liberalization started in India. And now this is the background. Now let's understand this entire thing in terms of films. Now imagine that as I said that the films that I just said the, you, uh, at the one end you have uh, uh, Tarzan which is like 1980s film. If you really want to have some good time, you really want to laugh, it's a good film to see. It's not a comedy. They made it in all seriousness. But if you see it today, you will, you will uh, you know, laugh your heart out. Now and on the other hand, you have some, you know the term blockbuster. The, the term blockbuster, today we say how much a film has earned. The 90s, late 80s, early 90s term is blockbuster. Is the film blockbuster or not? Hollywood was producing blockbuster films with good special effects. And we were producing, you know, uh, very, very interesting titles. So interesting that some, I, I, you know, even cannot utter those titles here. But they... When people were exposed, you know, that's a simple rule. It's, it's a rule which is everywhere that you expose yourself to better content and whatever content you are seeing, you will start demanding for the new content. That's a simple rule. If you have not, you know, uh, uh, though it's, it is not an appropriate example, but, you know, to appreciate taste, like you today, you and I crave for homemade food because we are not at home. That's why we crave for it. When we were at home, we never said ki ghar ka khana bahut acha hota hai. That was normal for us. But when we saw something very different, then we started our people to, you know, make good films. Now, as you can see on your screen, there are three, four, five posters that, that I have put up. Now, since the economic liberalization of the, of the 1990s, an ever-increasing number of Indians have traveled abroad, often to visit their overseas families, the diaspora has come to represent an important part of market for Mumbai film producer. Now, the term this diaspora, I'll, I'll pick it up separately and then we will talk about what does it mean and uh, and and how it works but look at look at your slide right now i have put up a poster of hum aapke hai kaun dilwale dulhan ya le jayenge one is ghayal one is aashiqui now when you when you see when you see this these films you see liberalization you know taking shape now why why these films i'll 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 give you an example when hum aapke hai kaun it was the first film which collected 100 crore gross, not net. Then you have Dilwale Dulhanya Le Jayenge, you have Ghail. Now, these are the varieties that I am talking about. One is family value, other is young blood. Uh, everything is like uh, perfectly laid out for them. One is Ghail, still fighting against the system. One is Ashiki, pure romance and kuch kuch hota hai is the new Indian image of the youth. So, in, so, so far we have talked about what liberalization is, what globalization is, what uh, uh, privatization is and how it changed the very nature of media and cinema simultaneously. Well, thank you very much.